Hey everybody, I'm um, going to go through, uh, so the last video was on the structural elements of Anthem for Doomed Youth and now we're going to look at some of the um, language features themselves. Um, okay, so starting off we have what passing bells for these who die as cattle. Um, firstly, passing bells. The bells are a... Um, uh, church symbolism um, for the uh, ringing of the bells uh, when someone dies or when there is a uh, funeral moment. Um, passing can be used, the connotation there is of um, several levels. Firstly, um, you have the idea that passing means that somebody has died when we talk about somebody has passed. Um, the passing bells when put together are, are the, you know, the bells tolling for the dead. And also passing gives us an idea of something passing by, so it's continuous. Um, we then have the simile who die as cattle which gives us an idea that the soldiers are going to the slaughter. Um, sorry, my handwriting there is terrible. They're going to the slaughter. Um, it, so like an abattoir. And it r reminds us as well of Dolce de Coromest where he talks of uh, the cud um, and that link there. So you can link the two poems. Um, then we have, notice we have the hyphen, which suggests that this line is a direct reply to the one above. Um, and what we have also going on here is we have only, only. The repetition of the only is like it's reinforcing the idea that this is all there there is. And as we have the monstrous anger of the guns, the stuttering rifles rapid, rapid sorry rifles rapid rattle, monstrous anger uh, of the guns. So we've got the personification of the guns, um, followed again the stuttering as well, gives us the idea of personification. We have then have this alliteration here of the R's in uh, stuttering rifles rapid rattle. So we, we've got a, um, opening lines that are starting very loudly, um, auditory imagery, it's all about the sounds and then can patter out their hasty orisons, the patter. So it's like this boom, 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 boom. This idea that you know we're hearing the rapid fire or the rapid rattle of the machine guns, and it's this, that patter. You have the plosive p um, that reminds us that it's like a spitting, and it's just this con, con, uh, tin, continuous sound that's coming, and that this, this is the music for the funerals. This is the music that uh, is um, for the dead and the thousands of dead, that all of these who die as cattle. Um, and you, re if we can link that to here with the doomed youth, you've got to remember contextually, and remember for module B you need to be talking about context, contextually um, the life expectancy of a soldier in the trenches in the First World War was just six weeks, six weeks only. So they are doomed. And it, this is, they are dying like cattle. Nine million of them died. Okay, then we have um, the oxymoron here of hasty orisons. Um, why is it an oxymoron, you might be asking? Um, <coughs> firstly, the orisons are the prayers. And when we pray, we pray meditatively. We pray uh, in our time. Uh, and we take, we're meant to take time out of our day to pray. And yet it has to happen quickly, hasty, under pressure, under um, time constraints. And link that to Dolce Decorum Est where uh, he talks about gas, gas, quick boys, um, the uh, ecstasy of fumbling and fitting of clumsy helmets just in time. These time references is time is running out. Time is not on your side. Uh, and it's uh, emphasised in both of these poems. Uh, no mockeries now for them. Notice the semicolons. No mockeries now for them. No prayers nor bells. We've got the repetition of the negatives, the no, no, nor, nor. Um, so it becomes um, that accumulation and uh, a syndeton. Um, oh, sorry, I lent on my keyboard. The syndeton is the... Um, no conjunction so it builds on itself that accumulation um, as it builds and builds 
and it juxtaposes um, this section here is juxtaposed against here. We have all this loud noise here and then nothing here. No mockeries now for them, no prayers, nor bells, nor any voice of mourning, save the choirs. And then we have this higher hyphen that takes us to, oh, I don't know what happened there, takes us to um, what kind of choirs? The shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells. Again, personification and loudness volume the shrill is a scream a high-pitched scream demented uh, kind of like demonic evil um, and then the wailing um, that loud crying of the shells and bugles calling them from sad shires uh, the bugles calling out the rev reveille at the end of the day to acknowledge the fallen um, and calling them from sad shires, calling them home, and there's a sadness to it. But there's a we're missing a human element in this, uh, in the whole of this stanza. All we have is these pronouns: the who, the them, them. Uh, it's and there. It's there's nothing there to suggest that we're talking about anyone in particular. And the descriptive words and the personification goes to the weaponry, the guns, the rifles and so on. And what we've got happening here is Owen is de dehumanising the soldiers. He's giving animation to the inanimate whilst taking away the human element from the act from the soldiers themselves so it's emphasizing their dehumanization um, now this has actually been going for a bit so i'll stop it here and then go on to the sestet in the um, next particular um, podcast <laughs>